Car Obsession is proudly supported by Carly and Draggy. Check out the video description to find out the latest discount codes. Hello guys, welcome back to Car Obsession and welcome to another walk around. If you are new to my channel, firstly, thank you for joining me. My name is Aaron and secondly, my walk around videos are pretty much a static review of the car. Therefore, if you're looking for driving content that won't come in this video, but will come in future videos. So be sure to subscribe and of course, click the bell icon. Anyway, that aside, let's move on to this week's car, which is the brand new facelifted Ford Fiesta ST looking resplendent in its optional mean green paint work. So as always, I will take you around the car, talk you through the specification and give you my first impressions. Now, just before I really sink my teeth into this video, there is a bit of wind today, so that may compromise the audio a little bit, but hopefully not too much. Anyway, yes, onto the new Fiesta ST. This is of course the facelift and with a facelift, comes changes. The first of which is you can no longer have this car as a three door, which may be a disappointment to some of you watching. This is now five door only, but you know what? I still think it looks really good as a five door. And I wouldn't say the extra two doors really detract from the overall design. So yeah, for me, it's not a complaint. It's just, of course, an observation. Now, another key change for the facelift is of course the front end which has had a nip tuck now of course this well design in general is always going to be subjective but i'm not too sure on the front end when i saw the first press photos of the facelifted fiesta i thought mm, i'm not too sure but you know what let me wait until i see the car in the metal before i really make any judgments now i have seen the car in the metal I'm still, not, I'm still not too sure. Of course, the Focus has recently been facelifted as well. I think the Focus looks far better in facelift form than it does the Fiesta, at least from the front end, at least. I wouldn't say this car looks bad, but I can't put my finger on it. Maybe the front grille is, is just too big. I think, that, I think that's my issue. The front grille is, is, is very dominating, isn't it, of the front end? I think, yeah, I think if it had a smaller grille, uh, and things were maybe perhaps better proportioned, maybe that, that would improve it, but that's merely my opinion. Now, another key change for the facelift is, of course, the interior. Now, the old car and many fast Fords over the years have used Recaros, not anymore. Ford Performance is now producing its own seats in-house, and whilst I think the integrated headrest looks a bit ungainly, I have to concede, these seats are fantastic to sit in. They're comfortable, supportive, they hold you in the right places. The only downside, in my opinion, and it could be poor muscle memory, but I'm, I'm sure that these seats sit a little bit higher compared to the Recaros in the pre-facelift. I could be wrong, and uh, if there's any uh, Fiesta ST owners that have uh, sat in the pre-facelift and, and the facelift back-to-back, -back, please correct me, but I don't know. I'm, I'm, it feels like this seat sits a little bit higher compared to the pre-facelift, but I could be wrong. That, like I say, that's just muscle memory and my opinion. Anyway, before I take you onto the inside properly, I want to talk to you about the engine. Now, of course, like the previous car, it is powered by a 1.5 litre uh, three-cylinder turbocharged petrol, which sends its power to the front wheels via a six-speed manual gearbox. Lovely. Now, the power hasn't changed. Therefore, that means you get the same... Uh, where are we? Uh, uh, da -da -da. That means you get the same 200 horsepower as you did before, but the torque has been increased. The old car produced 290 newton meters, whereas this car produces 320. In case you're not very good at maths, that is an increase of 30 newton meters. No, 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 you're welcome. Um, now you may think, oh, hang on, does that mean this car is now faster than 60, 62 miles per hour? Uh, I'm afraid not, no. Although this has got an increase in torque, it's all about offering a stronger mid-range as opposed to um, more performance off the line. That means, let me just close the bonnet down, that means this will still hit 62 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds, which if you want to be uh, pedantic, is 0.3 seconds slower compared to, let's face it, this car's biggest rival, the Hyundai i20N. But are you really going to notice that day to day? No, not unless you're gonna have a, uh, a traffic light Grand Prix with the i20N. No, I don't think so. In case you're really wondering, the top speed is 143, but in the UK at least, top speed is kind of irrelevant, isn't it? Because um, 
I don't think I've, no, I've never hit top speed in any car in the UK. So yeah, uh, pretty irrelevant. Now in regards to fuel economy, this is a hot hatch. So I'm not gonna speak about that too much. In fact, I've got the spec, uh, spec sheet in the car so we can go through fuel, fuel economy in a few moments. But let me just take you around the rest of the, rest of the car because I haven't done so as of yet. So this uh, mean green paintwork is optional but I think it looks fantastic. You've got 18 inch alloys as standard which are wrapped with Michelin Pilot Sport 4 tires which are brilliant. Uh, although I must, uh, I must say uh, the Goodyear Eagle F1 tyres are also very good. Uh, I've been working with Goodyear so I thought I'd give them a cheeky little plug. But yeah, I am also a big fan of Michelin, I do need to be honest. Uh, yeah, um, Michelin and Goodyear, they both make very good tyres. Anyway, enough about the rubber. Um, the rear end is unchanged, so that means you get a nice diffuser, double exhaust pipe and a nice chunky roof spoiler. Now interestingly, for this car, it has a panoramic roof. Now the reason why that is interesting, well at least for me, is because when you go into Ford UK's configurator, you can't actually spec a pano roof, nor does it come as standard. So yeah, th this car right here, technically speaking, you can't buy, because um, yeah, um, for whatever reason, you can no longer get a panoramic roof. I'm sure there's someone out there that will be able to tell us why. Um, yeah, the rear end remains unchanged. So let me take you back into, actually no, hang on, no. Whilst I'm at the back, let me show you the boot, although it is unchanged, so you still get the same, I think it's 292 litres uh, worth of space. As always, the boot is filled with my filming crap, but I will cut to a clip where the boot is a little bit emptier. Yeah, the boot is average for this kind of car. Um, one thing I will say, is it is quite a large load lip, it, oh pardon me, there's quite a large load lip into it. So getting bigger, heavier items maybe uh, in and out may be a little bit of a faff, but to be fair, I can't really imagine some, someone loading a chest of drawers or something into this car because it isn't very big, is it? Right, this time I promise I'm going onto the interior. Keyless entry comes as standard. There aren't actually that many options on this car, uh, but this isn't cheap in my opinion. I know new cars are going up, everything's going up. But um, yes, little ST motif you may have spotted just then, very briefly. So on the inside you get this kind of faux carbon trim, which normally I would despise. I don't really like this kind of thing, but I have to admit, I think it's been done quite tastefully. Some of you will probably uh, um, scoff at that and think, Aaron, what are you smoking? It looks like it's been uh, treated to a Halford special, but no, I think it looks quite classy, in my humble opinion. Uh, some of you may disagree, but hey, if we all had the same opinion, the world would be a very boring place, wouldn't it? I do like the uh, the red trims around the vents. Gives that extra sporty edge to the car. I like that a lot. Now, unlike the brand new Focus ST, the Fiesta has to make do with uh, Ford's uh, older SYNC system. So this has got the SYNC 3 system, whereas the new Focus has got the SYNC 4. This is an eight inch touchscreen, um, whereas the brand new Focus ST has got a 13.2 inch touchscreen. Very impressive indeed. I've got the same 12.3 inch digital display, which uh, changes with the drive modes. So you have a button on the steering wheel. In fact, you've got two buttons for the drive modes, you've got S, which uh, will put you straight into sport. I like that feature, a nice handy shortcut. And the, as you can see, the display changes with sport, makes it more racy, black and red. I love that, of course, car obsession colors. But if you hit the mode button, you'll find a choice of th uh, four driving modes. I almost said three, now, a choice of four. So you have sport, racetrack, eco, and normal. So yes, pretty self-explanatory, really pop it back into sport mode. And you can toggle through, oh, hang on a minute, no, sport mode. You can toggle through the uh, little displays in the middle. So you've got your performance gauges, you've got performance details, tire pressures, uh, a little bit skew with. Calm screen, who wants to be calm in a Fiesta ST? And fuel economy. Uh, actually, I did speak about fuel economy a little bit earlier, I believe. Um, so yes, I've got the spec sheet just here. So on a combined run, you, you can expect up to 42.2 mpg and on my drive here today which was mostly uh, a roads um, and it was a, about 20 miles drive i got about 
35 mpg and that was in sports mode using a relatively considerate right foot and co2 emissions are 151 grams per kilometer now i, I touched upon this car not being cheap and that is because without options look at this 26,645 pounds for a fiesta just seems a little bit scandalous but let's be honest uh, new cars in general they've all gone up if you wanted a, um, a brand new golf r fully loaded with options you're looking at over fifty thousand pounds which is just madness but anyway uh, the mean green paint work is a 775 pound option this has the uh, uh optional sync 3 with navigation and um a few other bits that is uh, 600 pounds and i mentioned the um i mentioned the panoramic roof earlier well ford called it the openable panorama roof um that says nla now i'm going to assume that stands for no longer available so if you were to take the panoramic roof out of the equation this car would cost twenty eight thousand and twenty pounds so yeah a fair chunk of money so in regard to what you get a standard uh, you get a reversing camera if i just show you like so uh, rear parking sensors you get the drive mode you get a good host of safety systems uh, climate control wireless phone charging of course you get the very nice sports seats which are lovely to sit in um, as well as a few other bits and bobs uh, now this car's biggest rival is of course the hyundai i20n and that car is cheaper i think from memory it is about twenty five and a half thousand, give or take and that comes with a better warranty so uh, and it comes with um it comes with loads of standard and there's no optional extras apart from the color so it does make it a little bit difficult to justify why you would buy this car over the i20m but uh, i will speak about that more in my main review which will be coming soon let me move things on to practicality so the door bins are of a good size as you can see i can fit in a one liter bottle a bit of a squeeze but i uh, did manage to get it in there i do actually have a bit of space left over for a few snacks or chewing gum or, or whatever as i've mentioned you've got the wireless phone charging pad in the middle three cup holders uh, two of which are for, for larger bottles or cups and then you've got the little one in the middle for little bottles like this or for energy drinks like red bull and so forth a little slot where you can perhaps perhaps put the key which is actually in my pocket a center armrest which isn't adjustable but does offer a good amount of storage underneath you get a little tray for loose items such as perhaps loose change or parking tickets that kind of thing and a bit of storage underneath as well as a usb port and there's also a pen holder in there as well although i must admit i've never needed a pen holder in a car but if you do want one you've got one um, and of course last but not least you do get the glove box which offers a fair amount of space for quite a small car i've got quite a few snacks in there and you've even got a, a dedicated shelf for the manual which you can just about see there getting a good driving setup is easy because the steering wheel adjusts for rake and reach like so if i just pull my camera back as you can see it's got plenty of adjustment the driver's seat is manually adjustable which uh, should come as no surprise but you do get um lumbar support which is um uh, electronic so that's quite nice and handy yeah getting a, a good driving setup is easy in this car but yeah as i've said i do find that i'm sat a bit higher in this car compared to the pre-facelift but as i've said that could be poor muscle memory uh, let me move things on to the back let me turn off the ignition we don't need it anymore nice st motive there and on the uh, touchscreen there i like that makes the car feel a bit more special inside makes it uh, a bit more of an occasion oh. now as always the driver's seat has been set for me i'm six foot two so i am of course a taller chap now interestingly i don't know if it's because uh, my driving setup is slightly changed compared to when i had the pre-facelift or perhaps these cheek uh, these uh, these seats are more chunky but if i step in you will see that I've got very limited knee room. Now, of course, someone of my size, particularly sat behind a seat set for my height, is always going, going to struggle when it comes to knee room. But in the pre-facelift, I did have a bit more space. It could just be because the seat was set up slightly differently, or like I say, it could be the seat itself, because this is quite a chunky seat. Look at that, girthy. 
Uh, but to be fair, the Vaccaros were pretty chunky as well. So it's probably more to do with my with my particular setup in this particular car. If I bring you down here to have a look at legroom, let me just close the door to improve the lighting. Legroom is fair, it's okay, it's not too bad. And in regard to headroom, now headroom's a bit of a, a bit of an interesting one because with this little blind up, I've got no headroom. Uh, but what I like, because this car's got um, dark roof lining, is that, look at this, whoop, this blind can be open and A, that gives me more headroom, and B, it just makes the back of the car so much more inviting. It's not as stingy or as kind of grungy. It's it, it's nice to have that natural light coming into the car, particularly with the back of the car being quite small, with it being a small car. So so Ford, I like that. That's a good touch. Um, in regards to practicality in the rear, as you can imagine, there isn't loads of it with it being a super mini. You do get map pockets in the back of the front seats, like so. A very small storage area here where perhaps you can pop some chewing gum or uh, some travel mints, that kind of thing. Uh, you do, of course, get a door bin, which I'm pretty sure uh, will be able to swallow up this bottle here, which is a 500 mil. Yeah, there we go. Easy peasy lemon squeezy that goes in just fine and you do also get hooks either side in case you need them to hang up an item of clothing but other than that yeah the uh the back of the fiesta is pretty much straightforward now it goes without saying this is a super mini so i very much doubt you'd want to fit three adults in the back or maybe even three children because it is quite tight um but if you're more if you are more concerned about carrying children you do get isofix points as standard because this is of course a practical family car well practical ish family car um you do have a little bit of a uh, hump down here so if you do have to have someone sat in the middle they will need to uh, straddle that although it's not actually that deep so if i bring you down here you'll see it's not quite as pronounced as you may think so that gives you an idea so it's not too deep the doors the doors don't open the widest if i'm going to be honest um so if you do have someone in your family or someone that you transport that that maybe has mobility issues they may struggle but to be fair um i'm sure you wouldn't you wouldn't really want to be uh cramming them back into the uh uh, into the back of a Fiesta anyway because it's a small car but yeah for me with my gangly legs getting in and out of the back isn't ideal but uh, thankfully I don't need, I don't need to worry about that because I'm always in the driver's seat um, I showed you the boot didn't I um, pretty sure I did yeah I, I'm sure I did I've lost track of what, what I've gone through um, so that yeah there we go that is the brand new Ford Fiesta ST. If you have any questions or queries, guys, please do let me know. In case you're wondering, this isn't my very own car. This is this has been loaned to me by Ford UK for the week. So um, yeah, I'll, I'll do a few videos with it, and then it'll be going back for uh, someone else to enjoy and have uh, a, a riot with because this is such a fun car. So this is more money than an i20M, and I suppose objectively speaking. The i20 and is probably the better bet and the car i would i would probably recommend but i would say the fiesta st is more fun and i was i was going to say it's difficult to put a price on fun but ford have done that twenty six thousand six hundred and forty five pounds but what i mean is sometimes sometimes you can't put a real price on a on a big grin on your face can you and the i20 in is great you know, I, I would quite happily have one in a heartbeat. But I would argue, and again, this is subjective, um, that the Fiesta ST, the little, little uh, fast forward, is more fun and a bit more playful. But anyway, I'll speak more about that in my uh, main review as I touched upon earlier. So yes, one more look around the car. And it really is time for me to finish because I've been speaking for almost 20 minutes. I'm sure you're um, starting to get bored, particularly as there's no driving. So yes, there will be driving coming soon, so be sure to uh, subscribe and all that jazz. So yes, it is time for me to finish. I do hope you have enjoyed this video or found it useful. If so, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. If you are subscribed, don't forget to click the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a video. But until the next time, guys, be sure to keep up the car obsession.